من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعض السيارة كنتم فاعلين قالوا يا أبانا ما لك لا تأمنا على يوسف وإنا له لناسحون صدق الله العظيم Respected brothers, my dear young friends, last week we mentioned the gathering of the brothers and the plan that they devised to kill Yusuf والسلام, and the thought they had that once they perpetrated the sin, then they will turn to Allah and seek forgiveness. And we talked about the severity of this mindset. Once they decided to kill Yusuf والسلام, the next thing was that whilst they were discussing, one brother said, Qala qailun. one of them said, La taqtulu Yusuf, don't kill Yusuf. Wa'alku fi ghayabat al-jub. Instead, cast him into a deep well, into a deep dark well. يَلْتَقِتُهُ بَعْضُ السَّيَّارَةِ So that some travelers may take him. In كُنْتُمْ فَائِلِينَ If you really want to do this, if you really want to kill him, then rather than killing him, throw him into a well, and somebody will take him and they will sell him out. Mufassirin say that out of the ten brothers, the, step, the, the ten stepbrothers, the eldest was called Yehuda. And he was the one that mentioned this. He was more mature, intelligent, and he had more of an understanding. And he also had a soft touch towards Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. That when they made this plan that let's kill Yusuf, he thought you can't kill an innocent boy. So he told the brothers that why should you take this crime onto your hands? Why should you kill this innocent boy? Don't get stains of blood on your hand. Rather, you should put him in a well and let some travelers take him. So that way, your objective is fulfilled. You want him away from the father, so the father's love, his dedication, his fondness is dedicated solely towards you. That doesn't mean you have to kill him. You can just put him somewhere, you can put him in a well. And other Mufassirin say that Yehuda went to such an extent that he told the brothers and he tried to make them understand that what you're doing is totally wrong. And he said that if you throw Yusuf away in some fallen or you kill him, have you even thought of what will happen to your father, Yaqub a.s.? Have you thought the rest of his life will go in misery, in grief, in agony? Have you, thought, have, have, you, have you thought about this? Have you got any consideration towards this? So when the brothers heard him saying this, they got angry because they had so much jealousy. Jealousy had come over them so much that that's it. The end, they were not ready to listen. Nor were they going to change their sons or mindset. Whatever plan they had to kill, that's it. That's what they were going to do. So when Yehuda told them, okay, have you taken your father into consideration? They got angry and they said, are you with us or are you with Yusuf? Are you going to be with us in the plan or are you going to be with Yusuf? So at that moment, Yehuda, he realized that these brothers are not going to leave him. So he's intelligent. So straight away, he made a plan and he got an opinion together. And he gave a moderate path. And he said this. He said, you are killing him so that you can, you can take him out of the picture. Why should you kill him? Rather throw him into a well. If you throw him into a well, then his life will be spared. And some travelers will take him, they will buy, they will sell him to some other country, some other place, and he will be gone. And you will get your objective, that he will be no longer by your father. So why kill him? So they realized, they thought, yes, it's a good idea. So they all decided, let's do this. From this, and what Yehuda told the brothers, that have you got any consideration towards your father? This a lesson we can derive. But nowadays, when children start to age and become teenagers, then some of them take a, a, a path which, is, which was not taught to them by their parents. 
they start to do things which were not shown to them by their parents. And they start to go deep into their selfishness and their foolishness. And they have no consideration for the fathers. They have no consideration for the mother that my mother's sleep is gone the whole night. She is crying and sleep, not, sleep, not sleeping. She has lost sleep because of me. And she is becoming thin and frail. They don't have this. They have, because selfishness, because they want to feel, fulfill their desires. They want to fulfill their passion. They want to fulfill what they wish. And they think, no, my father and my mother are becoming an obstacle. Rather, the father and mother are trying to direct him towards good. Because they are older in age. They have matured. They have a better foresightedness. And the parents are the best well wishes of any child. But yet they do not understand this and they do things which will put the father's uh, honor in jeopardy. It becomes difficult for the father to leave the house sometimes. They do such foolish things and they have no consideration, which is, very, which is a very, very wrong and a sorry state. And the first say, ulama say that three, three relationships are such that nobody should try to, nobody should severe. One is the father, parents' relationship, your, parent, your relationship with your parents. You should never severe that. Your relationship with your ustad, because he's your ustad, he taught you how to become a good person. And your relationship with your sheikh, because he will show you how to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one thing we understand from this is that as we grow, and sometimes our parents will say something, and it's, 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 it's a great chance that it will be against what you want. But if you sit down and you ponder and you understand, you will realize that what they are guiding you towards is the best thing. In terms of marriage, marriage time comes and you have one thing in mind, the parents have another thing in mind. They are thinking far ahead, they are thinking 20 years ahead, you are only thinking two days ahead. You are looking at one year only. And then later on, you have to regret in your life. So it is very important that you, the father and mother are in the picture all the time with you. You have to be considered about your parents. You are considered about their feelings, about their emotions. And it is very important that you obey them. So when the brothers didn't, dis, uh, when the brothers decided that we are going to kill him, then Yehuda bought up this idea that rather than killing him, do this. Now, if you look behind, that brothers coming to an extent of killing their own brother, how does it happen? Then there's a spark. There's always something behind it that causes this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to put a picture that sometimes in families when you see this, there's a quarrel, then it starts from small things. It starts from different mindsets. It starts from wrong uh, thoughts and people have different assumptions. Okay. In, in this case, in Yusuf al-Islam's case, they had the assumption that Yaakov al-Islam loves our brother more than anyone else. That's it. They might made that mindset. And that was the beginning. And where did it lead to? It led to the end where they were ready to kill their own brother. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing this picture. That iktilaf in families, iktilaf in brothers, it starts from wrong mindset. Iktilaf in ideas, iktilaf in differences in opinion. And if it is not dealt properly, then you can get to this extent where a brother is ready to kill his own brother. And the backdrop and the background of this was hasad, jealousy. When jealousy comes into a person's heart, then he becomes blind of everything. He will go down to kill a person. He will also go down the route of doing black magic. He will go down the route of doing all sorts. And hasad. What is hasad? Hasad is the state of the heart. It's the state of the heart where a person sees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed a nemat on somebody. And he sees that nemat and he has the urge that I get that nemat rather than that person. He sees that Fulana has got obedient children. So he gets hasad. Why has he got obedient children? Why don't I have obedient children? So straight away hasad. He sees that Fulana person got a business. How come his business is prospering? How come his business is flourishing? How come I don't have that much wealth? Hasad starts to be low. He sees that some person has been given ilm. So how come he's, he's excelling in ilm? So when he sees this and he gets the urge that he should not be given that ilm. He should not be given that wealth. He should not have obedient children. He said, I should have it. This is hasad. This is the beginning of hasad. And the ending could lead to anything. It could lead to even killing somebody. And the stories are, we have we, the, recent, the recent story in our own community where this has happened, where they went to the extent of killing somebody. And 
the beginning is hasad, jealousy. So when a person gets hasad, then his mind doesn't work. And he just wishes. And there are different levels. The first level is that he, if he has it, he shouldn't have it, I should have it. This is the first level. That this nemet is what this wealth, he shouldn't have it, I should have it instead. And level two is that whether he has it or he doesn't have it, I should have it. And the third one is that no matter what, I don't want it, but he shouldn't even have it. And all the honor and all the respect he has gained from this, he should not have it. That should go for him. So in the first instance, somebody's got wealth, so he thinks, okay, it's okay if he has wealth, but I should also have wealth. Second, he's got wealth, so no, he shouldn't have that wealth. I should have that wealth. He shouldn't have them obedient children, I should have the obedient children. He shouldn't have that in, I should have that in. This is stage two. And when he gets really bad, Hasid goes really out of control, then the state is that well, he should not have it. Whether I get it or not, I don't get it. Whether I have obedient children, whether I have wealth, whether I have ilm or not, he should not have it. This is the worst stage of hasad. When this comes, then the person who is in, who is in hasad, he will, he will be at home, but he will not have peace. He will be in a good house, he will have good food, but he will not have tranquility. Because continuously his mind will be running and he will be monitoring that person. What is he doing? What, is he doing? what business has, does he have? Is he increasing in business? Has he got, what's his children doing? Have they become alim? Have they become hafiz? He sat at home, he's got his own children, but his mind is there. As soon as that person's name is mentioned, his whole, his whole life goes dark. That's why one person, one old person, he lived very long, 100 years, 120 years. Somebody asked him, that how come you, you are so old and fit and well, healthy? He said, Taraktul Hasad, Fabaqi al Jasad. Taraktul Hasad, I left Hasad. I didn't enter in Hasad. I did not let Hasad penetrate my heart. Babaki al Jasad, the return is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept me healthy. He kept me fit and well. When a person gets hasad, inside he is burning constantly. And when, when you look into this Yusuf Islam story, the brothers got hasad. Hasad is one illness of the heart, but look how many gunas and how many sins they went to. Number one, they had hatred for their own brother. Books. This is not permissible. Books for their own brother. Number two, they started deceiving their own father. They made a plan that we're going to take him to play with us, but they were deception. They weren't going to play with them. They were going to kill him. Number three, they lied to their father. After they threw him in the well, they came back with a shirt filled with blood and they said he got eaten by a wolf. So they lied to their father. They severed kingship, Qatar Rahmi, with their own brother. Qatar Rahmi, that, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't care, you're not our brother. Number five, the discomfort they caused to their brother, father. Pain and discomfort that they took the, his most beloved son away from him. And not for one year, for 40 years. Some say that Yusuf Islam, since the day he went in the well, till the day he met Yaqub the second time was 40 years. For 40 years, they put their father through so much pain. And number seven, oppressing an innocent boy. They hit him on the way to the well. They used to bully him. They oppressed him. All these gunas, seven gunas and, and many more gunas, they, they, they lied to the Nabi of the time. They deceived the Nabi of the time. Deceiving the Nabi of the time? Is that, that's a major sin. So look, one hasad and so many sins. So that's why Ulama Rasulullah said that Iyak wal hasad. Protect yourself from hasad. Iyak wal hasad. Protect yourself from hasad. Wa inya al hasad ta'kulu al hasanat kama ta'kulu al al hatab. Because hasad, jealousy, eats away good deeds just like fire eats away dry wood. When there's fire and you put dry wood in, straight away it burns it away. It turns into ash. Your hasad will turn your good deeds into ash. They will become useless. They will become worthless. There will be no worth to it. Because you prayed namaz, but after the namaz, your hasad. What will hasad do? Because you have hasad, you will do giver of the person. Because you have hasad, you will, call, you will make accusations that this person is like this. All this money is from fraud. His children, they cheat in Dalu. Fulana, they do this. His ilm, he, he teaches in exams. Give it. Slandering him, accusations, trying to defame him, trying to uh, dishonor him. All these gunas, so he prayed one namaz and he's doing so many gunas outside. Will there be any value left for that namaz? So that's why when hasad comes into a person, he's, he eats all, away all his good deeds. That's why ulama say that this hasad is such an illness in the heart that if a person sees this, if a person feels, then he should do some things to remove this. And they say the, the first thing is, that if he feels that I have hustled for this person, 
And number one, he should do salam to him. He to do salam. Whenever he sees him, rather than him coming to salam alaikum to him, salam alaikum, do salam to him. Number two, make dua for him. In your own time, in your free time after namaz, make dua for him. Ya Allah, make his business prosper. Ya Allah, in his in, give him bar barakah. Ya Allah, make, his, make him means of hidayat for other people. Make dua for him. Number three, praise him. Until today, you are doing give of him, you are talking, by the way, now praise him. Mashallah, he's a good person. He, he's a truthful person. He's a loyal person. He's an honest person. Number four, give some gifts now and then. Yes. Even if it's small, mamuli, itar, give a gift. Because uh, when you give a gift to somebody, it creates mahabbat. And number five, if somebody speaks bad about him, if somebody speaks ill about the person that you hate and you have hustled for, then you defend him and straight away say, no, 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 it's not like this. When a person does these things, then inshallah, if he is getting hustled for somebody, then he, he will be protected. And usually ulama say hustle happens with three types of people. Hum, Hum Pesha, same job. Two doctors in the same area. They will have to hustle. Two doctors. Two alims in the same area. Hum Pesha. Hum Umar, same age. Two, two pharmacies, same age. One pharmacy is 60 years old. He's, he's senior. And one is 20. The 20 year old will never be jealous of the 60 year old. And the 60 year old will never be jealous of the 20 year old. One alim 25 year old and one alim 55 year old. They will never be jealous of each other. Because he will respect him as a senior and he will have shafqat him as a junior. When will there be hasad? When they are both similar age. And when they will see, okay, he's, he's increasing in this. He's increasing in this. Two, two people in the same business, same jobs, doing the same business. They will have a, a person selling food and a person selling, uh, a person with a, selling tires. They will not have a for each other. Because it's different business. So, Hum, hum Pesha, same job, same occupation, they will have hasad. Same age, similar age, they will have hasad. Hum Watan, same area. So one Alim in Blackburn will not be jealous of an Alim in Leicester. One uh, doctor in London will not be jealous of a doctor in Edinburgh. Because they are far away. But two people in the same area will be jealous of each other. And to protect us from this jealousy, this is what you have to do. And usually it happens from close people, people that you interact with, students in the same class. One student in this Dalum and one student in this, they will not be jealous. But two students in the same class, there's chance of jealousy might happen. Two students in the same college, in the same school, there's chance of jealousy will happen in the, in, in the class. Because they're in the same area. So whenever we see suspect, number one, we need to do these five things. Do salam to him, give him some gifts, talk good about him. If somebody talks ill about him, then straight away defend him. When a person does this, then inshallah he will be protected from hasad. Then, once they finalize, when Yehuda gave him this plan, that rather than killing him, let's put him in a bed, they said, yes, yeah, good idea, let's do this. So now they've made the plan, but now they need to go to their father to take permission. Because previously in the past, whenever they used to go to Yaqub that sent Yusuf with us to play, Yaqub would decline. He would say, no, 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 no I, I'm not going to send him. Because Yaakov had so much love for Yusuf he did not want to go, let him go out of his sight. He did not want to separate him and de uh, let him depart. So you say, no, 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 leave him at home. So they thought, what shall we do? So they went to the father and they said, call Uya Abana. Oh, oh, father. Malaka la ta'amunna. Why is it that you do not trust us? Malaka, what is it? Why is it? La ta'amunna, you don't trust us. Wa inna lahu la nasihun. Whereas we are indeed his sincere well wishes. We are his well wishes. We are his brothers. We are not going to harm him. We are not going to hurt him. Whenever we come to take permission from him, you always say no. You always say no. We are his brothers. We are not going to harm him. So let him come with us. So he can play with us. And when he plays with us, he will freshen up. He will have exercise. He will get strong. He will, he will, he will become physically strong. Mentally he will, become, he, will, he will become fresh. There's good fresh. So they try to persuade their father. And to give strength to their idea. He said, you are well wishes. You are not going to hurt him. He's our brother. We are going to look after him. So they deceived him. The plan was to kill him. But to take him away from the father, he said, we are going to do. Bingo. So from this, we understand a few things. Number one, that every youngster should always keep the parents in the picture. Be considerate about your parents. And as they go older, then you become more, even more considerate. Number two, jealousy. Jealousy is a very, very destructive illness. And if it creeps in, then it causes many sins. Uh, people get to the extent of the, uh, 
harming each other physically, um, behind the scenes through black magic, uh, behind the scenes by slandering, making uh, people that do shar, inciting them. Okay, Fulana is like this, like this, go and hurt him, go and harm him. So hasil. And number three, you should be straight and clear, not deceive, will be deception. What are you deceive anybody? Because the saying is clear, that is the English saying, that whatever comes around, goes around. That whatever comes around will always go. Whatever you do, eventually it will happen, the consequence will also have to face it. And nowadays we see that the way we deal with our parents, in future we see so many stories. That when the person gets married, then he has children that are very disobedient. And then now they cry and say, most of Mitavis. If you look back, how, how was your way with your parents? How did you do? What did you do with your parents? So may Allah Sumatra gives the correct understanding. Gives us to to act upon what's been said. Subhanallah, you need Subhanallah, you need to understand.